Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I'm just showing you what is happening with the RTX 3080. I'm doing a live stream here in just a moment uh, that you maybe already saw, but primarily look at the thermals that we're hitting on this GPU. If we look at hardware info, we hit a max of 108, and it's not even summertime here in Florida. It's actually a little bit cooler, but we're still seeing 102, 104 as we get to scroll up. Obviously, because we're pushing this memory as hard as we could possibly uh, could. This is an LHR card, um, and still we're just hitting those high thermals. So I'm gonna see uh, what we can do with this EVGA card and see if we can't bring those thermals down. Um, you know, adding thermal pads. I don't know if there's thermal pads in the backside. Uh, we'll see it in the live stream. Uh, I'll replace the thermal paste that I, that stock from EVGA with some good Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot Extreme. Um, and then check out the thermal pads that they have on the front side of the PCB. So here's the overall data for before, uh, hitting a peak of 108, averaging around 100 C, uh, when the air ambient temperature inside my household is around 78, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Not too bad, pretty typical. Um, and still those thermals, especially on the memory, are running quite high. So let's see if we can drop those down and see what the results are. All right, so I obviously made some changes to the GPU. We'll talk about the teardown here in a minute. Um, I'm losing hash rate because I'm recording in OBS. That's pretty obvious. But you could see the thermals um, over the past 24 hours of this thing running. Uh, I had to restart the miner. So the miner hasn't been running for 24-7, this particular one. There was another one before it that I had to restart. Um, but the GPU has been running consecutively for 24 hours. Same ambient air temperatures in my bedroom. Yes, we did hit a peak of 100 degrees Celsius on this GPU, but averaging 94.8 Celsius, so that's a mark improvement. We're not getting to that 108, 110 T junction temperature of the GDR6 X modules. Uh, we say basically, I would say anywhere from eight to uh, you know five degrees by just adding thermal pads to the back, and obviously I added thermal pads to the front. Uh, the thermal grizzly thermal pads to the front side, so a little bit better. Not you know EVJ has good thermal pads that they ship out with their GPUs, but Thermo Grizzly is a little bit better uh, than what's standard. If it was Gigabyte or any other card, we'd probably see even greater improvement. Uh, but since it's EVGA, uh, we got some decent thermal pads on the front and now thermal pads in the back. I'm, I'm not sure why EVGA didn't include thermal pads in the back, uh, but either way, the point being, we can see a dramatic improvement in thermals on the memory side, uh, ICX and everything. Obviously, the numbers don't match up with hardware info because hardware info will actually show hotter, uh, whereas the memory modules over here will be a lot cooler. So that is the results. Um, let's talk about the actual teardown of this GPU. All right, so I did a teardown live. Uh, I took it offline because uh, there was a situation midstream. But basically, you don't have to remove the entire cooler, right? So the big heat sink, the big heat sink that we see on the front side here with the copper cold plate, we don't have to remove all of that to get to the back plate. Unlike other cards, Gigabyte, um, ASRock, stuff like that, where we have to remove the entire GPU to, or heat sink to get to the back plate and put thermal pads, we don't have to do that with EVGA. You can easily just take off this back plate, add thermal pads, and that may improve your thermals off rip. You don't have to go as deep as I did. However, basically there's four main screws holding the retention bracket on the back side or the heat sink uh, to the GPU, PCB and stuff like that. Then you have uh, roughly nine screws, smaller screws uh, that you have to remove in order to get the heat sink off. Now the bad thing is, is on some of these screws, if I get to it, let me show you the retention bracket real quick. So that's the retention bracket. You can see how curved it is that it actually puts a decent amount of retention. We got a little bit of plastic or rubber there to kind of protect the PCB, uh, but the PCB has a nice opening, uh, so that way it's not breaking any SMDs or putting any pressure on SMDs, so well designed as always by EVGA. Uh, one of the screws to remove the heat sink is in a precarious position. Um, it's up there towards the top behind the EVGA sticker. Now here in the States, we don't have to worry about that, but you might have to worry about it in your country, about voiding the warranty, yada, yada, yada. Uh, in my country, uh, we have right to repair. Uh, so you don't have to peel it or anything like that. You can just stick the screwdriver in 
and literally rip it off. That will give you access to the back side of the PCB where we got the RGB LED for the EVGA logo, both at the top and on the side of the shroud uh, towards the bottom because there's a connector. But uh, one of the problems that I was trying to mention earlier that you'll see me kind of juggling with is a washer. There's washers that hold some of these screws in. Not every single one, but some of them. Um, and I actually pointed out right there in that video. Uh, bear with me. So right here, you can barely see it, but right where I'm pointing and right where I'm circling my mouse, there's a little washer, but there's no room for you to get your finger in underneath there. There's another one right here on the corner. So you might have to use some tweezers. The iFixit kit provides tweezers, the plastic tipped ones. I would recommend to use those while you unscrew. You don't want to lose if just in case you're trying to remove the back plate just to put thermal pads in the back and you don't plan on tearing down this entire GPU all the way. Hang on to those washers with some tweezers or something. Make sure you don't lose it because once it drops down here in the heat sink of the GPU, you're going to have problems. And then you will have to tear down the GPU all the way just to get access or get it back unless you shake it enough times to drop it out of the fan or the IO or whatever it may be. So just be careful of those uh, washers. Once you have all the screws out of the way, obviously we can get access to the PCB, but then the or the back side of the PCB. But then the biggest uh, annoyance that I had uh, and what caused some concerns or issues during the stream was when you try to lift up this uh, GPU heatsink, you don't have a lot of room to play with. There's really actually only a few connectors that are stopping us. The first one is the fans. With the fan connectors, you could just use a flat head and kind of pry very carefully, not a lot of force, pry carefully up or away from the GPU uh, and then up towards the heat sink. And that will pop them out. But the biggest annoyance wasn't the, so much the GPU fans itself, it was the LED connector that I'm about to show you right now. So this LED connector not only powers this EVG logo on the bottom right um, of the screen, but it also powers the LED light and the back side of the PCB. And you can see as I pull up, there's not a lot of room. So you kind of have to have tweezers to kind of pull that and pop it off. But what I found the best way to go about it is basically disconnect the fan connectors first. And once you disconnect the fan connectors, then you can rotate the, uh, the heat seek assembly up a little bit more to where you can get at that RGB LED lighting. Uh, watch. So I got the fans off, now you rotate it up, and now you have better access to this RGB LED light. Obviously, you can't lay it down, so you're probably gonna wanna stand it up because you see how much tension or, um, yeah, how much tension that wire is having when I try to lay it down. You can't do that. So you kinda, kinda have to hold the heat sink up in the air and very carefully pry this RGB connector off. You don't wanna pull by the wires or anything like that because you'll break it. Um, and then we can get it down into the nitty gritty where we can see uh, it looks like two mil for the memory thermal pads on the front, but then we got uh, two mil or 2.5 mil on the MOSFETs and, and I think one mil on the VRMs. Don't quote me on that. Um, it may be different for your model, your particular GPU, uh, but you can see that they ripped here and they ripped for a number of reasons, right? Because because I modded the GPU or I applied a, a Galax BIOS, if I pause this, you can actually see that the thermal pads kind of seared to the various components, the memory modules, the um, VRMs, they kind of seared and, and got so hot because this GPU was running and being overvolted because I thought it was a Galax, not an EVJ. It got so hot and I surpassed the T-junction of 110 multiple times that I'm pretty sure the thermal pads that were utilized if I, if I didn't modify the BIOS, they would have came off a lot easier, but because I modified the BIOS, I obviously seared those thermal pads to the components, causing issues. The thermal paste that was on the GPU die normally is dry anyways, but it was just extra dry. It was almost like, you know, I, I scraped it off using a pick uh, from the iFixit kit, but it's just, you know, this is why I say modding your BIOS, you gotta take into consideration what are all the cons uh, that you, or what are all the sacrifices you're making for this said performance. So it looks like the, the MOSFETs were good, the VRMs got a little toasty, thermal pads got a little toasty. I'm happy EVJ is using a copper cold plate. And teardown's fairly easy. You didn't have to go as deep as I did trying to remove the fan shroud. Um, I, I did that because basically uh, I couldn't figure out how to get to that LED connector. But once I figured that out, it made it a lot easier. 
best thing I could say, go for the fans first, disconnect those very carefully, then come around and go after the LED right here. That was the biggest trouble. Uh, just remember, you're gonna have to hold the heat sink vertical while you unplug that. Don't pull by the wires and you'll be good to go. Replace what you need. Uh, obviously, I replaced the thermal pads with uh, Thermal Grizzlies Minus Pad 8 on the front side, as you can see here. And then I use, uh, what was it, G-Lids um, Extreme, or it's one of those, it's one of the top end G-Lids. It's like almost 17 watts per meter Kelvin on the back side of the PCB, which obviously makes my back plate super hot, but with the proper airflow in my case, I can dissipate the heat on the back plate. Uh, I'll see if I can't post this live stream teardown um, back online. If you guys are interested, just know that there was a lot of talking going on. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I think it was worth it. Uh, it got my memory thermals a lot better. And it's winter time here and we were hitting 108C. So I feel a lot more comfortable uh, now that my GPU thermals are in check. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video. You can see I'm applying some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme, some really expensive thermal paste. Of course, the heat sink is making the camera not focus correctly, and I figured it out way late in the stream. Uh, but it definitely helped cool everything down. Could have been a little bit cleaner in the application, but there's your Thermal Grizzly Minus Pad 8, your Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme, and then I again I put G lid thermal pads on the back side of the PCB once I put everything back together. So you all have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Sorry if the video ran a little bit long. Uh, I will catch you in the next one.